one of the exercise questions was determine the value of a parameter A for which the system has no solution, exactly one solution, and infinitely many solutions. So what are the values of A for each case? So the system is here. This is augmented matrix form. And parameter A is here in the last row. So these are the elementary row operations we perform to produce zeros below the leading entry. So this is what we get. Now we would like to produce zero below here. And this is what we get. So now we have this system. We know that A squared minus 4 is A minus 2 factor of A plus 2. So this will be helpful for this guy here. So now, first thing is, we cannot just divide by A minus 2. If A is equal to 2, then we are dividing by 0. That's no good. So this situation here tells us what are the values of A that we need to start testing. Because there are treble values. In this case, treble value is 2 and minus 2 also. So we need to check what's happening with the system when A is equal to 2. Then what happening, what's happening when A is equal to minus 2. And then what's happening when A is not equal to 2 and is not equal to minus 2. So we need to examine each case. So the cases are determined by the expressions we have here. So don't start dividing by anything. You need to stop here and start thinking. This gives you the problematic values for parameter A. So in our case, it's 2 and minus 2, so we need to see what's happening with the system when A is equal to 2 to start with. Well, if A is equal to 2, then this is 0 and this is 0. So we have a system like this. The last row is full of zeros, which is nice. So there's no contradiction here. So from this moment on, we know that this system will have infinitely many solutions. So when A is equal to 2, we know the system has infinitely many solutions. The last row is full of zeros and on the other side is zero also. Now, what is the form of a solution? So now I'm pushing it further. They didn't ask for it, but I'm generous today. So I'm pushing it further. So I divide by negative seven, the row two. My goal is now to produce a due station form. So I do the job here. And I have my leading entry, leading entry. This is reduced echelon form. Now, I know that x3 now is free variable. So rewrite this system. x1 is equal to this, and x2 is equal to this. It's coming from the system itself. Okay, don't forget to flip the guys on the other side. So values of x1 is given by, by this expression, value for x2 by this expression, and x3 is free variable. So general solution, of the system x1, x2, x3 is given by the expression here where x3 is a free variable. So since we have a free variable, we have infinitely many solutions. So when a is equal to 2, the system has infinitely many solutions. So that's the first case. What's happening when a is equal to negative 2? So when a is equal to negative 2, then the system looks like this. Oh, the last row, I have row of zeros slash minus 4. So this here is a contradiction. This says that 0 is equal to minus 4, which is not true. So this system is in contradiction. We know already that it means that the system has no solutions. So when a is equal to negative 2, system has no solutions. Last case, what's happening when a is not equal to 2 and is not equal to negative 2? Well, we start with our system here. So a is not negative 2 and it's not 2. So I can divide by this term here, which is just the product of these two. Okay, so they'll get 1 here and 1 over a plus 2 on the other side. And then what I need to do pretty much is just follow my elementary row operations to get reduced tension form identity. So first step would be to divide by the, the expression here. And we know that a is not 2, A is not negative 2. So this is not 0. So that's good. We are under this hypothesis. So we do that and then we produce zeros above the leading entries. And the last operation is on the row 1. So you can do it on your own. No need to 
waste time on that. So you can just check that this is true. And I will get the reduced threshold form identity slash, and then I have on the right side actually the solution. So x1 is equal to this expression, x2 is equal to this expression, and x3 is equal to this expression. So for each value of a that is different from 2 and minus 2, my system has a unique solution. So if you choose a equals 7, you'll get a single number for each component, right? So you'll have unique solution. For a equal minus 65, you'll get another unique solution. So for each value of a that is not 2 and is not minus 2, you have a unique solution. So that's how you analyze the, the system. You first start, you get to your rational form, and then from here you find the problematic values of a. In our case it was 2 and minus 2, so first thing we check what's going on when a is 2. In our case we had infinitely many solutions. Then we check what's going on when a is equal to minus 2. We had no solution because of a contradiction. And then third case, what's going on when a is not 2 and is not minus 2. Then we produce a series of elementary operations to reach reduced tension form. And in this case, we were lucky we got a unique solution. So in this case, for each value of a different from 2 and minus 2, we have a unique solution.